Hi everyone, my name is Scott Wankiewicz, and if you have watched my videos or read any of my content taken in my courses, you know that I'm a big fan of Lightroom. I do a lot of Lightroom education, and whenever I need a tip from Photoshop or I want to, uh, or somebody wants Photoshop education, I usually send them to my friend Blake, Blake Rudis from uh, F64 Elite and F64 Academy, and um, Blake has a tool called the zone system. He's got a black and white zone system for, uh, for Photoshop, and he's got a color zone system for Photoshop. And what he has done is just, uh, he's released a new extension for Photoshop, which actually takes what he did in two separate products, merges it into one, and then also adds some other cool things. And so I want to show you what it is and why it's so beneficial for anybody who uses Photoshop. Now, again, I'm not a big um, fan of Photoshop because I think, in my opinion, is too complex for the Irish photographer, but um, it is still one of the most popular tools for photographers. So, you know, if you need some Photoshop advice, if you need uh, cool tools like this, then I recommend checking out Blake's website, and I'll link to that in the article. But here we are in Photoshop, and I ha opened a raw file, it's a DNG file from my Nikon D810, and all I did to it was put on the lens correction. That's it. So if I turn off the lens correction, you can see the little bit of a change. Now I'm going to hit uh, open image and it's going to open it up in Photoshop and you'll see I will have one layer and that's it. I have one layer right here and that is the image. But right here I have the zone system. Now this is a mo uh, it's an extension that uh, Blake has built for Photoshop and it basically uh, gives you a lot of cool things. So you got the black and white zone system if you are not familiar with the zone system, it is basically a system that Ansel Adams uh, utilized in a lot of his photographs to be able to edit specific areas of a photo without impacting another. So you can see here, you've got a whole range of different zones from black to white that you can edit in black and white. And then what Blake has done is you can create an individual zone. You can create, um, you know, ranges of zones. And, and, you know, not be too specific. So it's, it's really up to you the way you want to go. If you switch to color, you can see he's got a similar thing for color ranges. So you can adjust tones in color. And then the effects tab has a couple effects. And then, of course, you can see nothing changed below from workflow tools down. Nothing has changed as far as um, what's there. So you've got a bunch of different things that you can do uh, at the bottom. Now, I have been playing with this for a little bit. I have not had a chance to really dig in 100%, but I want to give you my overall impression and my overall thoughts on it because this is going to be ideal for um, a lot of portrait photographers and a lot of landscape photographers and architectural photographers. Um, so really can work for a lot of different people. Now, I say for portraits because... A lot, of, a lot of photographers that do portraits are moving towards luminosity masking. And in a way, the zone system is just like luminosity masking, except it's more precise. It gives you more control over um, the different, you know, areas you want to, um, to touch on. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, the group zone right here. So I'm just going to choose all this and it's going to, uh, as you can see, it's thinking it's going to actually create a layer of a bunch of different masks. Right now, what it's doing is it's using Blake's algorithm to determine uh, th what the zones are. And now it's done. I can go to layers. So you can see zone system. And now it created zone zero through four for me automatically. I didn't have to do anything. Okay, look how, see how easy that is? Now, what I can do is I can go ahead and I can adjust the tone curves of each zone specifically. So if I go ahead and and open up the 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 curve for uh, zone zero, and I start adjusting. You'll see some changes. Now I'm going to do some drastic changes just so you can see what happens. But I'm going to also edit this photo a little bit, and just so I can get a little bit of more detail in there. Okay. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to zone one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm editing individual zones from that's separated from each other. And you can see that now looks, if I was to hide that one, you can see 
it actually got a little bit brighter in the mountains. Zone two goes a little bit more in the mountains and a little bit in the sky. Now again, this is a technique that Ansel Adams used. And basically, Blake has digitized that, that technique so photographers can do it in Photoshop. It's, it's a brilliant thing. So here we go. I am just doing some more. I'm going to go through to the first 10 zones, and then I'm going to switch right to color. And you can see what color does. Yeah, so look at the mountains. Look how bright the mountains are getting right there. Specifically the snow on the top of the mountains. And zone five. Now, right now I'm like starting to get into the uh, into the sky a lot. And you gotta be careful. If you do the tone curve too much in a certain way, you can start to see some weird artifacts. And I'll actually show you, look at the artifacts you see over here right now. Let's make that circle a little smaller. So you can see the artifacts right here. And that's because I pushed it beyond the limits of, of what data was captured. So I'm actually going to go down and make the sky um, have a little bit more pop. And I don't want to go that much, so I'm going to bring that back up a little. And don't forget that uh, you can also go beyond what I'm doing here in the tone in the tone curve. Oops, I actually went too far there. Bring that back. There we go. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's see what that did. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to go a little because if you go too much, you'll get the artifacts. So here's zone eight. Too much. You can start, you're starting to see artifacts at the top here where the sky meets the mountain. And you also don't need to adjust every little every every zone you can do minor adjustments you can do big adjustments or you can just skip it so I, if i don't want to do zone 10 i can just not do zone 10. and i actually want that to be really bright because the rest of it's kind of dark okay now i'm going to collapse that you can see if i hide that you can see what that did right now the one thing i don't like is the clouds up here and again i can go back and these are all smart layers and masking so i can actually adjust these as i want to but i'm going to go back i'm going to select the background layer Hit zone system, go to color, and I'm going to do, um, again, I'm going to do this sort of range. Just for simplicity, you could do each individual if you want, or you can do the smaller ranges. But I'm doing this for simplicity of uh, having it so I can just do it quick. So I got red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta all red, automatically done. And let's say if I want to do the cyan, now this should actually, actually, let me go to blue. Blue should do um, the snow of the mountains. Yeah. But you can see it's also getting the sky. So what I would have to do is if I didn't want that to adjust the sky, I would actually have to mask that away, which I can do. I can mask, I can adjust the masks because that's all they are is mask. Everything is non-destructive right now in Photoshop, which is great. Um, let's see, I want green. So that'll probably do like the mount, the bottom of the mountains, but there's not much detail, detail there anyway. Let's jump to reds. And you can see I can get really deep. Now again, this is not the prettiest. I'm just doing this for example, so I apologize if it looks wonky, um, but you get the idea. So um, I'm actually going to remove the colors for now, and I'm going to go back to the zone system, and you can go to effects, and you can do a gradient, color gradient. So I'm going to hit color, uh, color gradient, and it's going to see a message here that says that it's going to uh, default it to 15 opacity, and then I can just change the color as well as change the opacity. So if I go in here and select here, I can see the different color gradients. And if you have multiple color, you know, if you've made your own or if you have multiple in your in your library, you can just choose what you have that you've made. So let's say I want that one and I go back to layer and I can adjust the opacity with how much of a gradient of uh, color grading I want. Um, I can also go in and you can do a solid color grade. You can do black and white. You can do the matte effect. So here's a matte effect. This is sort of like that Instagram effect. And again, you can reduce that opacity if you want. Um, to me, that looks a little flat for this photo. Um, you can do some radiance. So you can do quick radiance or en more enhanced radiance. So basically with radiance, you would uh, adjust the sort of blur. And then you would mask away where you want that to be or, or not be. So right now it's over the entire image. But you could go ahead and then just mask that out um, and only have it on the sky or only on the mountain, wherever you want it. 
Uh, then you can go on and you can do some dodging and birding. So what it's going to do, it's going to make a non-destructive layer. Again, I'm going to hit continue. It's going to make a non-destructive layer here where I can then go ahead and I can, I can uh, dodge or I can hold down the alt option key on the Mac and I can, um, I can burn, you know, you can do whatever you want in each, in each individual area. So it's additional way to, to get, uh, more detail out of, you know, areas in the photo where you want without, uh, impacting others. So here we go. I'm going to just do a little bit of fun. So there we go. So there's, if I, again, I can, oops, let's show that again. I don't know how I hid that. <laughs> that was interesting. So I can hide and show that one layer and you can see, you know, I'm dodging and burning again, non-destructive, but I don't want it. I just drag it to the trash and I can do it again. So basically what I'm saying here is that uh, Blake has made it easy to do the zone system, to do what others are calling luminosity masking, but in a more precise way, easily in Photoshop. You don't have to figure out Photoshop actions. You don't have to figure out, you know, how to do it manually. There's a there's quick buttons here in this extension, and it basically walks you through what to do. And you can also, you get instructions from Blake on how to actually use the tool, but you can also uh, pick up a course to go with it. You can see the video tutorials on how to use the tools with live photos and sample images that you can edit from Blake before editing your own. So if you are interested in this, uh, check out the Zone System Express from Blake Rudis. Um, you can check it out at F64 Elite and F64 Academy. Uh, and I hope that you that you enjoy it if you do check it out because it is fantastic. It's now in my arsenal of uh, extensions that I use on a regular basis alongside um, On One's extensions, alongside JPEG Mini, alongside um, BW Vision Fine Art and Raya Pro. So I've got a lot of cool extensions that I use on a regular basis um, when I am in Photoshop. Again, I'm not in Photoshop too often, but when I am in photo, when I am there, I want tools to make Photoshop easier on me with still giving me the power of Photoshop. So please check it out and um, let me know what you think, because I'm curious and I know Blake will be curious because he's going to want to make improvements based on your feedback. So there you go. Thanks for watching and enjoy um, the, uh, the Zone System Express from Blake Rudis.